This is Dumb Down Life number 133. Good evening, sir. Good, e- well, good, good after evening. Sorry? On, good after, well, it's, it's sort of afternoon-ish. Yeah. When, when does the evening start? I, I tend to call evening from when I walk out of work, which at my place at the moment is four o'clock. So <laughs> good evening. <laughs> yes, a, sl- a slightly new recording time. Not that anybody would know this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we're, we're recording in June, not October. That's a new time. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the big problem that we have with the regularity of the show is we're two very busy guys, you know, um, and... We, we've just sort of realised now that there is a, 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 a slot um, just as we get home before we start doing our fun stuff that we can do the recording. So here we are. Let's see how long this lasts for. <laughs> well, hopefully about 30 minutes. Oh, ooh, 30 minutes. Um, that, that's going to be a bit of a push considering, <laughs> considering that we're not doing music for this one. This is true. Um, this is not ruling out music for all future episodes. I'm sure that if we find some music that uh, interests us, we shall slip it in. Um, we'll certainly still be talking about music. Um, but yeah, no actual playing of music for the moment. You're listening to Dumbed Down Life. Throughout the years of us doing these recordings, there's one sort of podcast god. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sure he'll, he'll, he would love being called that, um, that has been constant in, in both of our entertainment rituals, um, this of Mr. Scott Sigler. And uh, this week, he's just finished the, last, the, the, the most recent book in his Galactic Football League series. Now, I don't believe that our listenership are overly familiar with Scott Sigler. Oh, we have mentioned him on more than one occasion. But I'm whether we have any listeners who also listen to his podcast. <laughs> whether we have any listeners. <laughs> whether we have any listeners. Well, but I want to say that I intend on this being a totally spoiler-filled episode regarding the Scott Sigler series. So if you are a fan of his um, and you've not listened up until the latest podcast, then go give that a listen first and then listen to ours. Um, if you've never heard of Scott Sigler and you've not listened to any of his stuff, go back from the big, very beginning and by the time you get to the end of the five books, <laughs> then you'll have some vague memory of the fact that we might have told you what's going to happen. Spoiled it for you. <laughs> so um, you, you have listened to the last one, I take it? I certainly have. What did you think? Um, well, uh, yeah, it's it's um, fantastic. I was slightly more amazed with the penultimate episode, or was it the, even the one before that? Uh, um, it was it was the the, the one before that um, was the the um, attack that you're referring to. Yeah. Then then the last two episodes have been talking about the the, the Galaxy Bowl game itself. That's right. Yeah, it was it was the the attack one that sort of blew my mind. Where were you listening to that when you? Um, God, where was I? Uh, I was actually in the car driving home, uh, and I ended up once I'd got home, it hadn't finished, and I stayed in the car and listened to the end of it. Um, <laughs> normally, when I'm listening to Scott Sigler, I, I normally listen to podcasts just to and from work. Yeah, and uh, I, I get to work, I turn it off, and then continue on when I come drive, start my drive home. Yep. Um, that particular episode locked me in my car. <laughs> until it was finished i must have sat on my driveway for about 10 minutes uh which would have looked really really odd anybody walking by but uh, yeah no it was that that blew my mind especially if you're thumping the dashboard and screaming <laughs> no <laughs> how could you <laughs> um i i did think that for one moment um in the very last episode there was going to be another no um but going back to your the episode you're talking about the one of the main characters um coach hoke or the hook jest um was killed <sighs> um 
I mean, I... that that really got me because um, all, most of the other characters in the books um, are they're either um, gangsters, um, cult leaders, or football players. Any one of those at any point uh, could yeah. could be killed. I mean, Scott Sigler has done it in his other books as well main characters he's he's not quite as bad as george rr R. martin but he's quite happy to go and kill off a main character if yep. the story needs it to be um no with with hokor it, it really it sort of hit home more you kind of prepared for everybody else to die um or at least there'd be a possibility of them dying. But um, poor little Hokor, he's he's just uh, the coach. He's never got himself into any of the sort of um, seedier side of the things that go on in the Scott Sigler books. He's, he's not a gangster. Uh, he, he's in no way is he a violent type person. Um, so he really was the most unlikely person to get killed. And it sort of really did hit home. Yeah, see, I've never really linked with him because of the exact things that you said there because he's not a gangster because he's not a player the only times you really hear anything of him is run the calls that i play <laughs> and run the plays that i call yeah. and you think he's he's just to me he's always just been a side character I mean, he's certainly a secondary character but it, it was one that sort of he kind of reminds me of like my PE teacher as an example. You know, he's he's the guy that's always there. He's doing the best he can. You know, he's 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 trying to run a football team while he's being given orders by a gangster. And I, I, I yeah, I kind of I wouldn't go as far as saying I got to love the guy, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, he, I did identify with him because he seems to be the most normal one out of the lot of them. Yeah, all yeah. the football players are sort of seven foot. Um, genetic freaks and everybody else is a gangster he's he's the kind of normal guy he's just a um, small furry creature from yeah the century. yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> it, it, it would be just the same as if um ma tweedy got killed yeah oh yeah do, do you know she's she's kind of almost like an identifying sort of grounding type character uh in and amongst all these other sort of super people uh, or larger than life people almost literally um and and yeah so i really kind of identified him so so when he sort of died it was like that was really quite emotional see i thought that um quentin may have killed don pine yes i did because he, he rough tackled him to the ground and despite um quentin being in the in the messed up shape that he was he sort of gets up head blurry not sure what's going on and pine doesn't pine doesn't you think, move yeah no I, I, you I'm, can't kill don pine well I'm, i must admit I, I kind of figured that that was sort of and that there's a bit of a history between don pine and uh, quinton and um i kind of figured that um yeah he probably would die um and my initial thought was that sort of another thing for Quinton to have to deal with. It was sort of an unresolved, they have unresolved issues, which they have now managed to resolve. Uh, and I thought that was going to be something else that he's going to have to learn to live with kind of thing, having just killed his first sentient. Yeah. Uh, and then he's going to have to live with not being able to forgive somebody. Uh, and I thought that was, a, yeah, that was yeah. another thing that there would be brought into the story, but uh, no, he took us off in a different direction and, and they did get their resolution. I, I was then also waiting for Don Pine to admit that he'd thrown that, the last, game. Yeah. thrown that last game yeah. to, to, to level things up, which, of course, then would have been completely the opposite way because it would have been, yeah, OK, well, I've won the Super Bowl, but I won it because somebody else let me. Somebody else let me, and that's not. Yeah. But no, again, we didn't haven't so far gone down that line. <laughs> I, mean, I must admit that that actually the the game itself was probably the biggest disappointment for me in the uh, entire book in that they won. Uh, I was, because he, he's, he's not known for his sort of Hollywoody fairy tale ending type things. Yeah. Um, and for them to have gone through an absolute perfect season that didn't lose a single game. Yeah. Then to survive this bombing where, Lots of the the main characters, or not lots, were killed, but they were sort of effectively taken out of the Galaxy Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Um, to then sort of battle against the odds and win with the last kick of the ball, kind of thing, seemed a little bit too Hollywood for me. 
I must admit, I was slightly disappointed in that. I would have preferred to see them lose. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a difficult thing as to whether the game or the surrounding story is more important. I don't always follow what's going on in the games. I rarely do. And in fact, I think in some of the, the games in this last book, he's not gone into enough detail. And the, the, the game has been like halfway through and then they've finished the rest of the half uh, um, with uh, Chick, Chick McGee and the commentators yeah. telling us how it finished. It's, it's almost like describe a couple of plays and then give the give you the result almost, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, the, yeah. The, there were a couple of times where I thought I'd missed an episode yes. because the game seemed to be such an important thing to then be just blown over by the commentary part I mean, rather than it, have, having listened to all five of the the novels um the, there seems to have been a trend where each subs- successive novel has dealt less and less with the football side of things yeah uh yeah. The, the when it the, the first one was the the starter that was all very much based around him getting to know life in um a, a tier two football team you know he struggles on the field with Don Pine um, learning how to work as a team and that kind of thing so you kind of got a lot of the football in that and then each sort of season or each sort of book uh, further on has dealt less and less with the actual on field stuff and more of Quinton's sort of personal life and everything else that's going on in the universe and I think now that um, he suffered those the injuries that are going to stop him from playing football um, the the whole winning of the Galaxy Bowl for the second time and sorting life out with Don Pine and Hulk or being dead and that, I think they're going to move much further away from football now and concentrate more on the um, uh, is it the Abyssinia? Uh, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah the, the 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 other threat, so to speak. I think that's going to take a much more central part in the next two books. Yeah, it's it's kind of got to um, because uh, well, it's either it, that or Quinton becomes the coach. That's the other option. Oh, because they need to replace Hokor and Quinton can't play anymore, but he's a damn good tactician. So does he become the new coach? Well, so so you've you've had the starter, no, sorry, the rookie, the starter, the MVP, MVP the All Pro the champion and, have, and now is the next one going to be the coach the coach yeah that kind of flows right to me leaving um his girlfriend as the quarterback as the quarterback rebecca montana's Montaigne. quarterback yeah oh that's a, that's well observed that's a, that's an interesting one i hadn't thought about that um i i just thought that because he's in fact i'm going to go and make a prediction because he's going to go <laughs> yeah because he's got issues with um uh, Greedock, the Splithead, the owner of the yep. Krakens, right? So how about the next book is called The Coach and the following book is called The Owner? The Owner doesn't st- sit right, sound right. But that's that would resolve that sort of beef. With, that, with, that would, yeah. Uh, from a storyline point of view, um, yep. he moves on to become the coach. He's got issues with the owner and he wants to sort of get back at him for him being screwed over in earlier books. Does he then become the owner or the the guy in charge of the entire franchise? Which the going back to what we were saying earlier, the the the, the amount of football, um, and we are talking American football here for anybody who's mm-hmm. listening that's actually a soccer player or English. Um, <laughs> for the amount of play that was described in the earlier books. I guess there's only so many times you can describe some of these plays without them sounding repetitive. Yeah. Um, and the the whole bullet time. Do you know what I mean by bullet time? Yeah, when it slows and easy. Where there was, yeah. it, when you're listening to the to the the uh, audio book, it says, and then he describes almost uh, step by step exactly what's happening um, in a much slower time than it's actually taking place. Again, that's only something that you can do. I think he did that quite excessively in the earlier books. Yeah, or the mid, the middle books, not so much in the earlier books, but I think it sort of peaked in the middle. Yeah. And it sort of dropped down a little bit in this one. I, I Very little in this one. Mm. The, 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 
the main reason for this bullet time stuff was to sort of try and get into the player's head and how they felt that time froze and time stood still and, and what was going on. Um, so, yeah, as a lot of things are becoming more automatic for him, then that bullet time would happen less to him. Yes. And therefore it, be- it becomes less of a, a feature in the books. Yeah. Um, now, going forward to the idea of him being the coach, when you're not actually involved in the play, I'm not sure how, how interesting that would be. But it would free him up from a time point of view to be running off and doing other things like saving the galaxy, because that's yeah. essentially where this is headed, is That's it? where it's got to go next, is when the Abanessia turn up. And to be able to do that, he needs to not be playing football, hence those injuries. So yeah. I suspect he'll become the coach, because he won't just walk away from football. I can't see them doing that, because that's been sort of the lynch. Not, not with two books left. No, no exactly. So I, I see him becoming, certainly for the next book, I see him becoming the coach, which then gives him more scope to be able to be off doing other things as such. Um, and Because uh, he's not spending his entire time planning and preparing for the next match. Uh, yeah, I see him becoming coach. And we've not seen the owner... He wasn't around for the end of the, for, for the for the Super Bowl, was he? Uh, yeah, no, he was on the podium. I'm, was he? Yeah, yeah, he was on the podium at the end when Quinton was in his um, healing tank, rejuve reju- tank. Reju- yep. reju- tank. Thank you. Uh, yeah, he was up on on the the podium taking the prizes. Him and uh, Rebecca Montaigne were on there. So, right. So he's he was there. Um, but yeah, I I, I see that moving in in that sort of direction hi this is scott segler author of the novels infected and contagious and you are listening to dumb down life so one of the things that started while we've been away um is daredevil on netflix have started started and ended because it was just dumped as one season it was all however many episodes there was Uh, yeah i can't remember how many there was now but they they sort of made them all live all, all in one go, which was great because I binge watched them in two days. Oh goodness! No, <laughs> okay. Well, with um, Daredevil, Agents of Shield, um, Arrow, um, Flash, Flash, Agent Carter, Gotham, Agent Carter. Uh, I think that's it. Is that it? I think so. There's been a lot. Of, well, I've actually also been watching. Um, oh, it's a it's a Amazon Prime thing a science fiction um it'll come back to me but i can't remember it right now and <laughs> so yeah there's, there's been a lot of television that you suddenly go oh Pliny, we've not finished watching that yet not finished watching this yet nothing um well game of thrones of course is, is also um in, c- running at the moment so know, i'm really really struggling to get into game of thrones from you're watching it from the episode, from season one aren't you yeah uh, yeah. I, I've been watching it from season one for about a year and a half. Oh, goodness. Uh, I've got season one and season two on DVD. All right. Well, I was given season one and I've borrowed season two and it's taken me 18 months to, and I think I'm on like the fourth episode of season two. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's surprising because... Um, You'd think that fantasy would be yeah, your thing. It, it's right up my street. I mean, I've, I've played Dungeons & Dragons for absolutely years. I love fantasy novels. It, it's absolutely perfect for me. But for some reason, I just cannot become obsessed by it in in, in the same way as I did with Daredevil. Like I say, I binge-watched all 13, however many episodes it was, in two days. Yeah. Uh, with um, Game of Thrones... I just don't. I, I, I'll, pro- I'll watch one episode a month or something. Um, and, and realistically, I mean, like I say, two two seasons sitting there in front of me. I could watch at any point in time I want. And it's not the first thing that springs to mind when I think, what shall I do tonight? Yeah. Um, it's it's an interesting one because I, I, I think you need to get so far into it before you start getting um, hooked. I can't. I can't remember what happens in what series. So I'm a bit 
cautious about oh you can spoiling things but trust me mate i can't remember what i did yesterday so you can tell me anything you like (laughs) and i won't plus i because i'm so far behind it's impossible for me to avoid spoilers so i know all about the red wedding and stuff like that i just haven't physically seen it happen yet but are are there even dragons in have you uh, as far as to see the dragons? There are real little baby dragons. They hatched at the end of season one, and I've seen a couple of scenes with Daenerys with a couple of dragons, baby dragons sitting on the shoulders. But they've not grown into full size, being complete badasses like I understand they do do. See, see that's what I got hooked on. The end of season one, when she came out of the fire holding the eggs, and then the babies come out it's like ah, oh. <laughs> and. I kind of watch it every week hoping there's going to be dragons. Yeah. And, I, mean, and I understand there is magic in there as well, isn't there? Um, there is magic in parts of it, but not so much. So we, we've got people that can cast spells. We've got a fantasy world with castles and swords and kings and stuff. And we've got dragons. Now, not not to mention the gratuitous sex, sex and, gratuitous and stuff. Violence. Yeah, yeah, and and it's like, well, what is there not to like? I, yeah. I fully understand why people are obsessed with it, and re- really, you would pigeonhole me in right in there, absolutely obsessive about it. Just for some reason, I'm not. I know. I'm reading the books, and I yeah. like the books. I'm, I'm, in fact, if I had the choice between reading the book or watching the show, I more likely be reading the book so i struggle with books um i i think when you're sitting there watching a television program people are less likely to say oh would you mind just putting that down and and come and help so sitting outside reading a book it's like um when you've got time can you and it's put the book down whereas if i'm watching a television or watching a film then it's less likely to be interrupted, more likely to drag the person who wants yeah. me to sit down and watch it with me. Fortunately, I'm single and I don't have those kind of issues. I can do what I like. <laughs> yeah, there's that. First time I've ever heard you say, fortunately, you're single. Um, <laughs> yeah. Defiance was the other program Defiance. that I've been watching. Right, yes. Um, which is the one on um, Amazon. And there was... Is that the nu- one with the... It's a nuclear holocaust thing and that town is called Defiance, isn't it? Is the that the, the town is called Defiance. It's not quite nuclear holocaust. It's um, the aliens came and they tried right. terraforming Earth to meet their requirements. Right. So we sent up our space army, space navy, whatever you're called, and destroyed their ships. They come crashing into Earth. There's very few... Um, aliens left, so we uh, so we then had to work with them to make the world a livable place again. Right. And yes, defiance is is what's left of it's um, like the last human sports. outpost, isn't it? it or something? It's not quite the, the last human outpost, but it, it's it's what's left of St. Louis. Um, right. They've terraformed over St. Louis, so part of you know. The, the program is that they go down underground to see the old city. Um, and, but parts of it, like the, the, the arch um, are still visible. Um, but things like air, um, air travel are non-existent because there's, there's problems with getting enough fuel and all this sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Um, and the United States of America has become a wasteland with pockets of, of life um, with the makings of a unified earth force, but not everybody wants to join the earth union. And, and mm-hmm. it, it, it sort of, it, it's, it is all science fiction stuff. So, so is this, is this um, like Netflix produce their own shows? Uh, Daredevil being one is um, defiant an Amazon produced TV show. It's a sci-fi produced TV show. Now, whether it's actually aired on sci-fi previously or whether it's... I, I'm, I get lost now because I don't watch standard television very much. <laughs> yeah. I don't know which of these have already aired on... on I won't say terrestrial. It, on, on cable networks before coming to Netflix and which ones are... Or sorry, before coming to Amazon yeah. or which ones have come straight to Amazon. Um, there's that one, but the other one, which was an Amazon um, exclusive, was Extant. Oh, I've kind of, I've, kind of heard of it. I've seen it on my sort of 
watch this type thing on Amazon. But uh, yeah, no, I've, I've not watched it. Don't know anything about it. That one's um, Halle Berry um, is on a solo mission mm, mm. up on a space station. And she comes back pregnant. And she comes back pregnant. Yes. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> what happened there then? There then, um, yeah. That one was quite a good one. Um, new series of that starts in July. Right. So that that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, it, it's all... It, it, lots of stuff going on, but mm. um, I've not watched much of, uh, of, of 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 Daredevil yet. I think I'm on episode five. And what do you think of it? I take it you've seen the film, the Ben Affleck film. I saw the Ben Affleck film many, many moons ago. Um, can't remember much of the film. Lucky you. Um, <laughs> the I like how it's dark. It's interesting because I, I up until um, Daredevil, I've seen DC stuff as being the dark stuff, mm-hmm. while Marvel seems to be much more daylight, airy fairy. It's it's light and fair, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So um, watching Daredevil, um, and I am now on episode six, so I've seen the first five. Um, it's very difficult to tie it in with the rest of the Marvel universe. Um, other than the odd mention of, you know, um, if, if the guy was wearing a metal suit or carrying a big hammer, I'd understand you have the problem. <laughs> but he's, he's a blind guy kicking the crap out of these bad guys. Um, I, I want to see, I, I don't spoil it. I don't know whether it does. I want to see at the end of series one whether it ties in at all with the the last Avengers movie, because the the time of timing of it seemed to suggest that um, so in Daredevil they're rebuilding the city. Yes. Are they rebuilding it following the second following the Avengers, the first Avengers movie? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. There, there, there's check. certain oh, mentions um, throughout the series about the events of New York, and but it's never sort of explicitly mentioned. So you think uh, it, was, it was the events of New York was the first Avengers movie? Yes. The events of um, London was where um, Thor. The Thor movie was London when the the thing came down. Yep. And then the second Avengers movie was New York again? I can't remember. No, the, the one that's just been? Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> uh, I didn't like the second Avengers movie. No, it wasn't, was it? It was Because wherever it was, it was a place that they lifted the entire city. Oh, it was some Eastern European. It was the hometown of um, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, wasn't it? It was some, so that's, some um, made-up name. Some made-up name. So it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't one of the metropolis. No, it was some, some made-up Eastern European um, But it was village. the pure fact that they were going to drop it from a high enough height yeah. that, that that would have then caused a... A global killing event. Yep. That was the reason that they got involved. Yeah. So, yeah, there not there needn't necessarily be any kind of tie-in. No reference at all. From Daredevil to. Are you saying there isn't from experience? Uh, I'm not going to confirm. Oh, you, you, I can you, confirm you, you, or deny. You, you, <laughs> you can confirm that. Now as, that as far as, that far as I can remember, there's no mention. Um, I think it's timeline-wise, it takes place in between those two movies, from what I can figure out. Right. Um, yeah, there's there's no certainly no mention of um, the second Avengers film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they, yeah, they do sort of reference the the events of New York in the first um, uh, from the first Avengers movie. But uh, now I think it is probably one of the best TV series I've watched in a long, long time. I think it was absolutely brilliant. Um. Ooh. It, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure that I'd put it above or below anything, really. I, I am thoroughly enjoying all of these different superhero-based um, TV series at the moment. Um, all totally bonkers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, um, I'm really liking Arrow. Really, really liking Arrow. 
Arrow and Flash, very much. I haven't watched any Flash. Any of it? No, because, again, it's on... Um, is it on Sky? Or is it... On, I don't know what channel it's on, but, again, I don't sit down and watch Terrestrial Telly, so I don't sit down and, oh, tonight's Flash Night, and I watch it. Um, and it's not on any of the um, on-demand services yet. So, so where are you watching Arrow? Um, yeah, let's move on from that. <laughs> well, okay, but, but, but if you're watching Arrow on this mysterious ether hub, then why are you not watching The Flash on the same mysterious ether hub device? Because I haven't spoken to the person that uses the mysterious ether device to get ah, the files yet. See, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've not got around to that. Uh, I, I believe I may have them soon along with season three of arrow but um see i've got to the stage now where we've got now tv for watching game of thrones the day after it airs on (laughs) on sky yeah um we've got netflix and um amazon tv and i thought what was that there was there was definitely something we were watching. No, actually, now TV allows you to watch um, Arrow the day after it airs on Sky TV. Oh, does it? Um, and also um, The Flash. Oh, right. So yeah, it, it's I, I I didn't like paying or the idea of paying thirty or forty quid for Sky TV for when, two shows. Basically, we only watch Sky One, um, and if we have Sky, then it's a case of oh, can we also get this? Can we also get it? no? Right. So now TV lets you buy the absolute basic package, um, and that that's enough. And what's the subscription for now TV? Seven pounds a month, which is comparable to Netflix and Amazon. exactly, yeah. Well, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't like the way Amazon do their pricing. Um, I don't like being charged eighty pound all in one go. Yeah, the, <laughs> you work it out mathematically in the, from a month's payment point of view. It's about the same as Netflix. Yeah, but I'd much rather pay seven pound a month than eighty quid in one go. <laughs> yep, yep. Now the, the the thing that we like about the Amazon is the fact that it's tied in with Prime, and you get the free the, delivery the, the free delivery yeah and uh, over the christmas period that mm. pays for itself well that that's how i ended up with amazon yeah uh, because i signed up for the 30-day free trial around christmas which i'm sure is why they do it so you get free delivery over christmas express delivery and then you forget to tell them at the end of the 30 days that you want to cancel and they bill you for 80 quid for the next year yeah yeah and i'm sure i'm not the only one that got caught out by that <laughs> So uh, I don't know whether I'll renew it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Um, we certainly will, because the the Kindle Fire TV is the main media hub for us. Yeah. I mean, again, if I could pay for it in, in installments on a monthly basis, then I'd, I'd definitely keep it. Yeah. Because £7 a month is just £7 a month, but £80 yep. pound in one go is, is a lot of money to find in, in sort of one go <laughs> yeah but at, at the moment you're paying the seven pound a month for my Netflix. <laughs> yeah i am as i am for about five other people yeah uh which, which is totally legitimate you're, you're yeah, supposed it is. To Absolutely. Do that. yeah yeah um if wh- when does that come to an end it doesn't you? ever it's a rolling subscription monthly mm. well if you want to switch that over then let me know because uh, I, either I can send you the seven pound a month or whatever. <laughs> it, it's only fair that, that, that it's a, a, a thing that we float around between. Get get somebody else who's perhaps got a business related. To it. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I wonder who could who do could that. that yeah. for, <laughs> no, um, no I mean, there's about six of us, and the only restriction is you can only have so many concurrent Con- streams. Concurrent, yeah. So yeah. if you're watching, I'm watching, and then one of the other people ring up and say, oh, I can't get on. He's like, yeah, tough. You'll have to wait. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen that, have you? No, it's never happened yet, no. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know how often the other people use the um, the systems, but um, I, I know um, Lisa. She uses it quite a lot, but then she works nights. She tends to watch things during the day. You see, yeah. And then there's you and I. I think that's probably the three main ones because the other one is um, Derek, who never really watches telly anyway. He's always working or playing computer games. So, um, but it's there if he fancies it. Um, yeah. And I think the other one is actually Arabeth. Yeah, I set her one up so she could just have the um, they're like Netflix kids, don't they? And that's and she watches that when she's at yours, does she? Um, no, not anymore. She didn't really oh. watch it at all, to be honest. Oh right. Okay. So I think they're the five. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's essentially it's you and I who use it, which is you too. So it's not really ever an issue. Um, but but because of the 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 wealth of of different programs and films and th- things that are available through those legitimate sources. I find that less and less am I turning to alternatives to, exactly to watch it, which is which is. Well, I mean, it was Amazon that got me into Arrow in the first place because season yeah. one is part of the the Prime the payment. Prime. Yeah, but season two isn't yet. Yet is the thing. I mean, it, w- it will be, but yeah. um, I, I was impatient, which is why I went to other sources. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's. Um, I, I, yeah, I, re- I think that is another reason why I didn't get into Game of Thrones because, and this is going to sound so lazy, it really is going to sound lazy. Um, I use my PlayStation to watch uh, Netflix on the large telly. Yep. Uh, and it's so much easier to turn that on, flick around and find something to watch on the screen than it is to get up off my fat backside, walk over to the PlayStation, put a disc in, and then walk back, sit down and select the episode to play it's easier just to sit there and pick so i end up watching everything else rather than put a dvd in i know that's lazy i know what that. i've very, ended very up lazy. doing what i've ended up doing is most of these um most of these the netflix um uh, mighty uh, now tv um they actually have apps on the phone yes yes they do yeah and you, you stream your, your Chromecast to the television. And so you do all of the, 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 the fingering and all the searching and everything <laughs> on your phone. Fi- what? <laughs> fingering, you know, swiping and, and typing. and Yes. <sighs> on your phone or your tablet. <laughs> and then it shows up on the television um, without having to use a standard television remote control and navigate through what's getting better, but what has been. A, 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 an awful experience in the past of trying to find what you want. Um, I find that the, the mobile devices and apps are a lot, a lot better. Easier, which is how I use um, YouTube. Again, I've got, yes. I've got YouTube yep. on my PlayStation. Yep. But it's linked to my account, which is linked to my account on my iPad. And if you search for or find stuff you want to watch on YouTube. There's a same as a Chromecast. There's a little button you can click, and it throws it over to the PlayStation and shows yep. it onto the big telly, which is a brilliant way. It acts as a, the remote for it, so to speak. So um, a, a modern television actually has that feature built into it. Yeah. So you simply say, send it to this television. Yes. Uh, and and it works from there without the need for the, um, the the PlayStation, the PlayStation, or any other device to be plugged in anymore. Well, I think that's as good a place as any to wrap this episode up. Don't forget, you can contact us on the various social media sites. And so until next time, ta You can call the Dumb Down Life crew on 7 294 You can follow us on Twitter. Our account name is Dumb Down Life. The email address is ddl.podshow at gmail.com. The website address is www.dumbdownlife.com.